Hey guys, James Brown with Barton Springs Mill here for your next episode of Ask Your Miller Mondays. Hey guys, James Brown here with Ask Your Miller Monday. We're getting off to a late start today. It's been one of those days where everything breaks. And uh, as the owner of the company, I'm the guy who gets to fix all the broken stuff. And uh, I'm not I'm not that gifted mechanically, so it's a challenge. Uh, but I'm happy to be sitting down and doing this in the air conditioning. This is awesome. Let's get right to your questions. Um, number one, what's the secret to great pizza dough? Uh, I think the number one ingredient in pizza dough is time. I've tried a whole bunch of different recipes, things from King Arthur website, things from that I found online, uh, some amazing things from Peter Reinhardt and his book American Pie. Uh, some of the things from my old culinary cookbooks when I used to be a chef. And every single one of them worked well uh, as long as you allowed for sufficient time uh, for the flavors in the, uh, those doughs to develop. I think it's really critical in these pizza doughs that they have enough time. So I never make a pizza dough that I use the same day. Yeah, if I get a, a wild hair and I just have to have pizza, that day I'll do it, but I know going into it that, that the, uh, the finished product is going to suffer uh, because it needs that development time to develop any depth of flavor. Uh, so whether it be sourdough or commercial yeast, all of them need an overnight uh, fermentation period uh, so that they're nice and tasty the next day. Uh, another tip is that I'll make it in batches after I do uh, the initial proof sort of the pre-shaping proof that's uh, in most, uh, so your bulk proof that is in, in most of your pizza recipes prior to shaping into balls. I'll do that, then I'll do my shape. I'll immediately wrap those in saran wrap and put them in, wrap them in foil and put them in the freezer. Uh, if I wanna use those then at a later date, uh, I take them out of the freezer, take them out of the foil, set them on the counter. By the time I get home in the evening, there's enough thermal mass in my quartz countertops to suck the cold out of those. Uh, they thaw out and proof and are generally ready to go. So that way you should never have a pizza emergency where you're having to use dough that you made on the same day. As far as selections for wheat varieties that are particularly well suited for pizza, uh, I'm really digging the marquee. Uh, I think it's uh, got amazing flavor, although it's a little on the delicate side, uh, but uh, it has this crazy extensibility, which is perfect for pizza. It stretches easily and it wants to stretch. Uh, we talk about uh, in dough characteristics uh, for a given flour, extensibility and elasticity. So elasticity, if you stretch it, it wants to snap back. Extensibility, if you stretch it, it stretches easily and generally stays to where you've stretched it. And for pizza, that's great. It ought to not be a, a trial with a lot of resting of the dough to get your uh, disc spun out to the shape and size you want. So Marquis is perfectly suited for that. I think uh, TAM 105 works amazingly well. We've done some collaborative efforts with Chris Bianco where we've mixed Yacora Rojo and Rouge de Bordeaux together. Uh, all of these in double zero, so heavily sifted uh, for one of his Wise Guy pizzas, which is a sauceless pizza with cured, house cured sausage and uh, caramelized onions and smoked mozzarella. And that's fantastic. Uh, and also Ruby Lee works great. The, the TAM 105, Yakora Rojo, and um, Ruby Lee are modern varieties, and so their stretching characteristics uh, are a little more forgiving. But I would have to say, number one, for just pleasure of working with it, uh, and the mild flavor would be the Marquis. So try any of those and try them in combination. I think you'll like them all. So I hope that's helpful. Number two. Where do y'all get your seeds and what's the method of conserving them? Well, they come from all over. We have some uh, varieties that we have in development right now that we got from the U.S. Gene Plasm Bank. Um, this is a repository of all sorts of seeds from all sorts of types of plants and breeds, uh, including a rather lengthy library for wheat, rye, corn, it's, uh, the grains that we're interested in. 
and uh, we'll get these teeny tiny packets. Um, they won't just give that away to anyone. You have to have demonstrated excellence in agriculture and uh, show that you uh, have the means and the know-how to, to, to work with these so that you will get some sort of uh, viable result. Uh, we also are talking to farmers all the time, talking to our fellow, fellow millers around the United States and around the world, uh, sharing and trading seed that way. Uh, there are certainly some amazing seed companies online. Uh, a cursory Google search will come up uh, with some of these um, that have some wheat varieties uh, that we've tried. We also are reaching out uh, to farmers all over North America, including Canada. Our marquee and red fife came from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, our original seed stock. Uh, and then we have to take extra steps to make sure that we are um, good um, maintainers, good keepers, good um, custodians of these seed stocks uh, by making sure that we follow strict protocols of cleaning between harvesting different varieties, between cleaning different varieties, uh, labeling and tracking in our inventory uh, because we don't want to have cross-pollination or just contaminated seed stocks. Uh, I have seen plenty of instances with some of my colleagues uh, and I've learned uh, from their misfortunes what happens when you get Sonora and rye mixed together, or red fife and turkey red mixed together. Uh, you're really uh, up a creek at that point and really need to start over with new seed stock. There are some technologies that might be beneficial. Uh, color sorters, which are extremely expensive. Uh, if the contamination is minute, you can wait until the grains have headed out and you can go roguing, uh, which is where you get um, set of headphones and your adult beverage of choice and a pair of scissors or a pair of gloves and you go through the field and anything that does not look like everything else you physically remove. Uh, we have done that before for wild oats that have been in uh, some of our original seed stocks that we needed to clean up but we try our best not to have that problem in the first place. Um, apart from that in terms of preserving Small samples, if we get gifts from people or things to try from people, we will deep freeze them until we're ready to use them. Um, on the one ton tote basis, like we're dealing in for most items around here now, we have this modified atmospheric packaging system that we use that allows us to put a big four foot by four foot bag around our four foot by four foot totes, heat seal them shut, pull a vacuum and then flush with CO2 that makes them completely inert and uh, keeps insects of any sort uh, from getting in there. Uh, and that's our biggest concern. Once we have pure seed stock to store, uh, then our next big concern is that if we get weevils or granary beetles, uh, that they'll eat us out of house and home. So that CO2 helps us with that. And that's the way we preserve stuff. Um, as a side note, my philosophy has always been that these seed stocks, they don't belong to me. They don't belong to Barton Springs Mill. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I've taken it very seriously that we continue to ship whole berries to anybody that requests them for whatever the reason may be. We are not certified seedsmen, uh, so there are no warranties uh, expressed or implied about its viability as seed stock. But we love to sell berries to people, and we have heard back from some of our, fo of our folks who have planted those and had good successes. Uh, for me, it's I take the responsibility of being a steward of these seeds very seriously, but I also don't believe that they belong to any one entity. They belong to the world. So uh, that's a little bit of piece of our philosophy, and we're, we try to keep new seed varieties developing at all times. We have a couple of exciting ones coming up. Hopefully, within the next 12 months, we're going to see three or four new wheat varieties on the offering. So. Hope that satisfactorily answers your questions today. Thanks for the questions. Keep them rolling. Everybody stay safe out there.